The first stage of consciousness is deep sleep, where our nervous system is in a certain stage and you know, we respond to stimuli, but in a very primitive way. But it's still a state of awareness. Deep sleep is a state of awareness because you can respond to a stimulus. The second state of consciousness is dreams, where you wake up from that deep sleep into a dream-like state. And you start having some experience in the dream. There's some repertoire of experience. And then when you wake up from the dream state into the third state, it's called the waking state, which is presumably, I hope, what we're in at the moment, at least. <laughs> okay? Now we, we look back on the dream and we think, oh, that was just a dream. It wasn't anything real. It was all in my, in my head. And the Vedantist comes along and he says, so is this, all in your head. Okay, you think that there's an external world out there. It isn't. It's the projection of your own awareness. This so-called very physical world is the projection of your awareness in waking state of consciousness. And if you could wake up from this, then it would be as ephemeral, as transient, as temporal as the dream was when you were dreaming. But you woke up from the dream, and then you said, aha, that was a dream. You can wake up from this into the fourth state, which I'll talk to you about in a moment. And then you look back at this and say, aha, waking state, how interesting. <laughs> now, people have experienced that now and then in the so-called near-death experience. And you know, I mentioned my whole life flashed across the screen of my consciousness in a few microseconds. And then I went through this tunnel. And you've probably read all this stuff anyway now. There's so much literature. And then I was in the light. And then beyond the light, a new dimension of existence. There's been a spate of literature about this experience. But all of the literature says the same thing, all of it. It doesn't matter whether it's coming from Hindu tradition or Christian tradition or Islamic tradition or Sufi tradition. It all says the same thing. A review of the life process as if it was a dream. The whole karma of a whole life kind of flashes across, then a little travel then the light, then a new dimension of existence. It is literally the experience of waking up. Gautama Buddha, who is the founder of Buddhism, on his deathbed, people got around him and they said, who are you? Are you the Messiah? He said, no. Said, are you a prophet? He said, no. He says, uh, are you enlightened? He said, not really. The Buddha said this. He says, then who are you? He said, I'm waking up. I've just woken up from this dream that you call life. He said, this lifetime of ours is as transient as autumn clouds. To watch the birth and death of beings is like looking at the movements of a dance. A lifetime is like a flash of lightning across the sky, rushing by like a torrent down a steep mountain. But I'm now awake. The fifth state of consciousness, which is beyond samadhi, is called cosmic consciousness. Cosmic consciousness, where the brain functions in a completely different way, where you have the simultaneity of being in this world and not of it. In the Gospel of John, he says, I'm in this world and not of it. That happens when you are simultaneously operating in both worlds, in the material world and in the spiritual world. That's called cosmic consciousness. It is to have the witness alive and awake in sleeping, dreaming, and wakefulness. So you have the sakshi or the witness fully awake in dream state, in sleep state, and in waking state, which means your body and your mind are in deep sleep, but the witness is watching that. Your body and your mind are in the dream state, but the witness is watching that. Your body and the mind are giving a lecture or playing tennis, and the witness is watching that. So you never lose sight of the witness, no matter what. The witness is always there. This is called cosmic consciousness, the simultaneity of local and non-local awareness. And beyond that is the sixth state, which is called God consciousness, or divine consciousness, where the witness begins to wake up, even in the object of your perception. So you look at this plant, or this flower, and as you look at this flower, even on a perceptual level, you see there are rainbows here, and there's sunshine, and there's earth, and water, and wind, and space, and the whole history of creation right here in this flower. And then you go beyond that, and you see there's a spirit there. There's a witness there, and the witness is the same as the witness here. 
So Vedanta says, if you can't find God in this law, you're not going to find God in some book of religion. God is this life-centered, present moment awareness that allows you, even perceptually, to go beyond the appearance into the reality. Give up all attack thoughts. As soon as you give up, because you know, if you realize that the self here and the self everywhere is the same, every attack thought, no matter who it's directed against, is at yourself. So as soon as you give that up, you're right in that field of present moment awareness. And here the synchronicity accelerates to the point where you experience the miraculous. The difference between the invisible and the visible is shortened. So this is what manifestation is about. The difference between the time interval between the unmanifest and the manifest gets very shortened. So instead of calling it synchronicity or coincidence, you say it's a miracle. Beyond divine consciousness is the final stage of consciousness, which is called unity consciousness, where the spirit within merges with the spirit outside. And when that individual spirit merges with the cosmic spirit, that state of unity consciousness is beyond our individual personality. It's beyond our skin encapsulated ego. And in this state of consciousness, Vedanta tells us that we experience our individual body and our cosmic body as being one. Normally we don't experience that. Normally if we said, this is me, and then this is everybody else. Or this is me, and that's the world. But in unity consciousness you say, this is me, and that's me, and that's me. The expression, Vedantic expression, I am that, you are that, all this is that, and that's all there is. And if you really, really, really get that, then of course there's nothing more to say. Good night, thanks for coming.